Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. Good. I see some smiles. That's good. Um, youth and children's, uh, don't forget your sermon response forms. They're in the new place. Just yes, Zach, yes. It's a requirement. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't know. What, how do we punish them when they, when they don't do their sermon response form? Make them sit up front. Make them sit up front, yeah, right? And answer all the questions. Okay, so make sure you go and get that, Zach. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members and visitors, virtual and in person. I am Pastor Claire Acklia, pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church. Um, virtual worshipers, you can find the worship bulletin at flcjeff.org under the worship tab. Also, we will be communing today, so go ahead and get your communion elements if you haven't done so already. Um, also, if you're joining us virtually, please take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from by typing it into the chat. For those of you who are here in person, let's take a few minutes to welcome our visitor and to greet those around you. So I'll call us back together in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, this is my mom. Yeah. Uh, 
y'all. <laughs> all right. Um, here at Faith, we welcome all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, and no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, all are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Christ Jesus. Carrie, who do we have joining us virtually today? Just Michael and Charles. Okay, welcome, Michael and Charles. I'm glad you both are here today. As uh, same for everybody else. Thank you for joining us for worship, everyone. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sin, and we now free ourselves. We confess that we have to do the thought of our identity, our identity, and our identity, and our identity. We may not love the people of our hearts, we may not love the people of our hearts, we may not love the people of our hearts, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the mercy of Jesus Christ, forgive us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite uh, Maya to come forward for the children's sermon. Careful. Good morning. I like your bow tie. Do you know, this is unscripted, but do you know that when we were on internship, Jules and I, um, so I went to school for, seminary usually lasts four years, and for one full year of that seminary, um, we have to do internship, and so that's where you go to a church and you be a pastor helper for a year. So you get, to, it's like, experience doing the actual thing instead of just learning about the thing in the classroom, right? So when we were on internship, every Sunday, Jules would dress up in like a button-up shirt and a bow tie and suspenders, and she looked really dapper every single Sunday. She, we should probably share some of those pictures with you. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, first let's talk about our Alleluia. So tell everyone what's in the box. A big hallelujah and a little hallelujah. Why do we have a big hallelujah in the box? It's stuck. That's pretty close. That's pretty accurate. Uh, she said on big holidays, we take the big hallelujah out. On little holidays, we take the little hallelujah out. That's close. So what kind of a season is Lent? Serious. Serious, right. So we can't do like crazy mad rejoicing, right? Because we're being serious and prayerful and trying to be close to God, right? So that's why we put our big hallelujah away for Lent. But we can still say the little one on Sundays because Sunday is what? A little what? Holiday. A little holiday, a little Easter, right? Yeah. So we still say our hallelujah um, in our little voice on Sundays during Lent. So go ahead and hold it up so we can do our hallelujah. hallelujah. Good job. Now I have to do some research and figure out if we pull out our big hallelujah on Palm Sunday or just on Easter. But it'll be there. I'll figure it out and it'll be there when we're ready. Okay. So our word for today in sign language is the word together. And I might have taught you this one before. Do you remember? I don't remember either. But together is you go like this, and you just like make circles, like two circles. Can you do it? Yeah, together. So um, here's the story that, we read that we're reading today. Um, Jesus has a really good friend named Lazarus, OK? They're like really good buds. Um, and then Lazarus dies, okay? So the first thing that Jesus does when he arrives at Lazarus' grave, now this is Jesus, who, and Jesus is God, right? So Jesus can do anything, right? Right. So the first thing Jesus does when he gets to Lazarus' grave, um, he doesn't bring Lazarus back to life. 
He doesn't try to tell the women and the family of Lazarus, oh, it's okay, everything will be all right. He doesn't try and comfort them and say, you know, it'll be better one day. The first thing he does is that he cries. So he's really sad, and he misses his friend Lazarus, and he cries. And so that's, that's Jesus crying, but that's also God crying, because Jesus is God, right? Yeah. So God cries when sad things happen. So sometimes we feel like we're really sad, and that's okay, because life can be really hard sometimes. Um, God isn't always going to make everything perfect for us. That's not what God does. Even when we're like doing a really good job of being a really good Christian, God doesn't take away our struggles. We still have to struggle through things and, and do hard things, right? And feel sad sometimes. Instead, God walks with us during our struggles. So, can you think of a time when you were really, really, really sad about something? Can you think of a time when you were? Maybe? You don't know? Okay. Well, imagine being really, really sad about something, okay? So what would be helpful if mom and dad did what? How would, how would they help you? Say, say somebody stole your bicycle, and your bicycle is gone, um, and you're really sad about it. What are some of the things that mom and dad might do to help you feel better? <laughs> um, would they hug you? Yeah, they would hug you. Would that make you feel better? Yeah. Would they, would they go out and beat up the person who stole your bike? No, they wouldn't do that. So they're not going to like go and fix the problem necessarily, right? But they're going to hug you and they're going to be sad with you, right? Yeah, and that makes us feel better when there's somebody else to be sad with. That's called having empathy, when you share somebody else's feelings, when, when, um, when somebody can, can share your sadness or your happiness. That's called being empathetic, and that's one of the things Jesus was good at. So um, let's see where we are. So having, with us, having someone with us when we, were sa when we are sad helps us to feel better. And God promises to always be there with us when we're sad. So whenever we're crying about something, remember that God is crying about it too. And God is hugging you and God is with you, okay? Um, got it? Yeah? Okay, let's pray. Do you want to say the prayer this week or should I? I should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good and gracious God, thank you for giving us so many blessings. Um, but also thank you for being there with us and crying with us when we are feeling sad and when we are feeling hurt um, and when we're going through hard things. Thank you for always being there um, and for promising that you'll always be there. Please help us to remember when we're sad and when we're struggling that you are with us and um, that you're supporting us and you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Good job, Maya. Our first lesson today comes from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and God brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It is, was full of bones. The Lord led me all around them. They were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. <coughs> then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. 
So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live." I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then the Lord said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 130, and we shall read it verse by verse responsively. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. Our second reading comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. have another long reading today, so go ahead and have a seat. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Glory now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loves Martha and her sister as, and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the, Jew the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going to go there, are you going there again? 
Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in, in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you lain him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. <coughs> But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace Mercy and peace be yours in abundance, dear beloved children of God, from God our Creator, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Today's Gospel reading is another long one where there's a whole lot of everything going on. So let's go over the pieces of the story part by part, and I will share some important things with you as we go. So we have Mary and Martha at the beginning of our story. Now the first thing to remember when reading this story is that both Mary and Martha are very common names in this time. And we don't actually know if this is the same Mary and Martha that we find in some of the other stories that we come across. 
It's kind of like the wedding scene in the movie Goodfellas, where the bride is bring, being introduced to the family, and all the men in the family were named Peter and Paul. <coughs> the bride says, Paulie and his brothers, and his brother had lots of sons and nephews, and almost all of them were named Peter or Paul. It was unbelievable. There must have been two dozen Peters and Pauls at the wedding. Plus, they were all married to girls named Marie, and they named all their daughters Marie. By the time I finished meeting everybody, I thought I was drunk. So that's how the names in this story were back in Jesus' time. But even though we don't know if this is the Mary and Martha, if this Mary and Martha are the same Mary and Martha as all the other Mary and Martha stories, we do know at least one thing. We do know that this is the pair of sisters from the story where Mary anointed Jesus' feet with her hair. Similarly, there are several Lazaruses mentioned in the Bible, but there is not necessarily anything to tie this Lazarus, Lazarus with some of the other Lazaruses that we encounter. So, when we talk about this story, we need to remember to just read the story and take it as it is, rather than trying to, other add in, trying to add in other bits about who these characters were from different stories outside of this text or outside of the Gospel according to John. And so, we have sisters Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. And one other thing we do know about these siblings is that Jesus already had a relationship with them, even though this is the first time that Lazarus is mentioned. At this point in the story, Jesus already loved the family, and more specifically, Lazarus. So when Lazarus felt Ill, fell ill, the sisters sent a message to Jesus letting him know. When Jesus got the message, he said that Lazarus' illness would not end up in his death, but that the illness will glorify God, and he stayed where he was for two more days. Now, in remaining there for two more days, instead of going to see Lazarus right away, Jesus is not insensitive to the family's needs, but he understands that this family drama belonged to a larger story. Lazarus' illness is, the part, is part of the story of the glory of God. This illness is not an isolated event, but it is part of Jesus' ministry and mission. So after those two days, he announced he was going to return to Judea, but his disciples tried to talk him out of it because they knew Jesus was a wanted man at this point. But that didn't deter Jesus. He told them a bit about light and darkness, which is a common theme in the book of John, and then he said that he was going to wake up Lazarus because he had fallen asleep. Now at this point, Jesus knew that Lazarus was already dead. And what he said was another one of the things where he's speaking on a more spiritual level than his listeners are listening on. Jesus is talking here about Lazarus' death and resurrection, but his listeners think he's talking about Lazarus just being asleep and being woken up from that sleep. So anyways, Jesus goes on to tell them that God is at work through what is happening with Lazarus, um, will, with the end result being that they would come to believe in Jesus. So Jesus arrives in Judea, and by that time, Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. And this is a significant piece of information for that time period, because in Jesus' time, there was still hope for revival or resurrection within the first three days after someone died. If you were within that three-day window, there was still the possibility that you might be able to recover. You were dead, but you were only sort of partially dead. But after four days, you were, as my friend Pastor Pam calls it, dead, dead. That was it. Your life was over, full stop. So Martha went to meet Jesus and told him that if he would have come sooner, her brother would have lived. And that sounds like it could be a jibe, but she also expresses her belief in God's promise of resurrection. And Jesus promises her that she is right, Lazarus will rise again. He says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And Martha confesses her belief that what he says is true. But here again, Jesus is talking on a different level than what Martha is thinking on. What Martha thinks Jesus is saying is that Lazarus is now dead, but he will be raised again on the last day and will live in God's kingdom come along with all the other believers. But Jesus is speaking about more than that. Jesus is telling Martha here that salvation isn't just a thing that happens on the last day when you die. Salvation is life with Christ in the here and now. So Jesus asks Martha if she believes what he said, and Martha responds to Jesus' question with the confession of faith. 
Her confession, spoken in covenantal language, rings more of the old than it does of the radical new life offered by Jesus. Martha embodies the central question of this gospel. Will the faithful continue to contain Jesus within their own predetermined categories, however well intended those categories may be? Or will believers allow Jesus to shatter those categories and offer them the radical fullness of his grace? So Martha goes back and tells Mary to find Jesus, and she does. <coughs> but everyone thinks she's going to the grave to mourn, so they join her to support her in her grief. When she gets to Jesus, she says almost the same thing that Martha did, but without the confession. She says that Lazarus would not have died if Jesus had been there. And she weeps. And this is an important moment for us to learn. This is an important moment for us to learn from here. So what does Jesus do when he sees Mary weeping in grief for her brother? Does he take her pain and grief away? No. Does he make promises to make her feel better? No. Instead, he reacts by expressing emotion. His reaction is empathy. He was greatly disturbed in spirit, and he was deeply moved. He asks where his friend had been laid, and they invite him to come and see. Now we've heard these, used, these words used before, but usually they're coming from Jesus himself. Usually it is Jesus inviting others to come and see and experience and live into God's good news, into salvation and liberation and shalom. It's an invitation not just to see, but to experience and be a part of something, to know it firsthand. And it's the same here. Jesus is invited into the experience of witnessing Lazarus's death, of mourning the loss of a loved one, of grieving for something that was so beloved to him and is now lost. And having experienced and felt that, Jesus wept. Jesus expressed empathy. He weeps for the loss of his friend. He weeps for the fact that the women have to experience grief in the loss of their brother. He weeps because he knows that this story is intertwined with his eventual death. He weeps for the state of the world that he lives in. He weeps that even as God, he can do nothing to take this pain away from humankind. Jesus weeps for all those things. Jesus arrives at the cave that served as Lazarus' tomb, and he's still greatly disturbed. He tells them to take the stone away, and Martha reminds us that Lazarus is four-day dead, dead dead, and that the body will already have started to smell. But Jesus reminds her of the promise that if she believes, she will see the glory of God. And again, Martha understands those words as a statement of the Jewish belief in the resurrection on the last day. However, this is not the resurrection of which Jesus speaks. Jesus is talking about life in the here and now. Jesus is promising something much greater than just this one thing that will happen someday. He's promising salvation for that very same day. So the stone was removed. Jesus thanked God for hearing him and called for Lazarus to come out of the cave. Lazarus comes out, still bound, and Jesus invites those present to unbind him. And in doing so, Jesus is inviting those present to participate in the resurrection that is happening right before their eyes. The victory over death that resurrection represents is available in the present moment in the person of Jesus, not only in some distant future. And that's just as true for those at Lazarus' tomb as it is for us. We are being invited to participate in that resurrection, that salvation, that liberation. We are being asked to take a part in releasing those who are bound by earthly things and ideas and constructs so that those people can also experience the transformation that we have experienced. Lazarus's name in Hebrew means God will help. Not God will do it all, not, God will fix everything so it's all nice, but God will help. God invites us to help bring about heaven on earth here today, right now. 
God invites us to help bring about God's kingdom come where God alone reigns supreme. God invites us to exist in this imperfect world and to help to make it better. Life in Jesus happens here among the brokenness, failings, and, lim and limitations of the physical world. A listener of one of the podcast commentaries I listen to on a weekly basis wrote in this week about the text with a personal story of her own. And this is what she said. She said, during her CPE, her assigned areas were the NICU and the high-risk pregnancy unit. She spent several days visiting and praying with this woman whose baby died in her arms just hours after being born. The last time this woman saw her, the woman asked, the, the woman who lost the baby asked, Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. Why won't he do the same for my little girl? I'm pretty mad about that. Am I going to hell? And if I do, will I ever see my baby? So after the writer swallowed a river of tears, she assured her that the woman was not hellbound for being mad at God. She located the Bible in the room and started reading John 11. She says, when we got to the part where Jesus wept, she stopped me. Do you think that Jesus is weeping for my baby? The writer replied to the woman, yes, he's holding her now and weeping for her and for you. So when you are weeping and wondering where God is, wondering why God let this happen to you, asking God what is the purpose for this hardship that you're experiencing, I hope that you can remember two things. Number one, God is right there alongside you and is weeping with you. And number two, in every death that we experience here on earth, God promises a resurrection. God promises that that death will not have the last word. God promises life in abundance. God promises to shatter those things that we think we know, grief, pain, suffering, so that we can experience the radical fullness of God's transformative grace. Thanks be to God.
us join together in the creed. I believe in For those of you online, if you have prayer requests, go ahead and type them into the chat now. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe, and bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Merciful God. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness, especially Jim and Barb, Gabe and Stephen, Gordon, Fami, Fred, Nancy, Greta, Karen, Sonia, Robert, Aaron, Ezra and Lucia, Norma, Roy, Pam, Alice, Pam, Richard, Grace, Megan, Cody, Lissy and Brendan, Jeffersonville, Jeffersonville Police, and emergency first responders. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving, in songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints, especially Robert Atkin and Shirley Schwartz Bushman, who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God. Do we have any other prayer requests online? No. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. And if you have a first offering, you can bring it up to the basket at this time for CLM.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And make us not Uh, just a word about communion. We have juice in the center of the tray and wine on the outside of the tray. We have gluten-free wafers if that is what you need, so just holler um, and the, come to the banquet for it is now ready. You may be seated and the usher will direct you.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right. So soup supper every Wednesday during Lent, we're doing soup supper. Um, it's at six o'clock. It goes until seven fifteen. Um, the two families bringing soup this week are the Millers and the Walkers. So don't forget your soup when you come, Millers. Um, we do need people to sign up. We need someone else for April fifth and someone else for April 9th. So I'm going to pass this. I know I've been passing it a lot lately, but I'm going to pass this. And if you're interested in bringing soup, go ahead and sign up. Um, all right. So I have plotted out who we have for um, volunteers for Pride Fest. So I'm going to go through this list. If anything doesn't sound right, if I marked anything wrong or in the wrong category, come up to me after service and let me know. So for setting up sometime before four, we don't know what time that will be. We have Ken Hawkins and John Rogela. Working the FLC booth from four to 5.30 is Gavin Kissling and the Rogelas. And they all supposedly have their yellow shirts already, right? Okay. Um, doing free mom and dad hugs from 4 to 5.30 is Patty Smith, who already has a mom hug, right? A mom hug shirt. And the Kisslings, who already, I know they already have their shirts. So working in the booth from 5.30 to 7 is the Gernans, and they already have um, their gold shirts, God's Work Our Hand shirts. And hopefully Noella Whalen, who, does she have a shirt? Do we know? Okay, so that needs to change. All right, and just uh, text me or let me know what size she wears. All right, thanks. 7.30 to, no, 5.30 to 7, free mom and dad hugs. Um, I have Meg and Jamie Poole, and I have you down for each to order a shirt, one of the same size. I'm not going to say your size out loud, because that's rude. <laughs> um, and I have Stephen and Katie Gray also, um, and they also ordered shirts. And I'm not going to say your size out loud either, because that's rude. And then tear down at seven is the pools and the Grenans. Does that sound right to everybody except for the shirt for Noella? Okay. All right, so that's good. Um, we did that. Um, your prayer partner assignments should be in your cubbies. Um, if you're still interested in having a prayer partner, just holler and we can part you, partner you up with someone. If anyone's interested in baking communion bread, I have several recipes, and that is an option. Um, so let us know. Um, would you like to report on our council goings on? Okay. I didn't warn you for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> We kind of talked about at council that not maybe everyone reads their emails as often or as much as they, they might. So we wanted to stay in touch with people um, by just kind of giving you an overview of some of the topics that we talked about. And some of the things that uh, Pastor Claire just mentioned in her announcements um, covered some of those things. Um, one of the other important things that we talked about was um, the contributions. Um, and we've been drawing on some of our um, savings that we have that have um, been uh, so graciously given to us by members of our congregation who have passed. Um, and we can continue to do that, it's just that they will run out at some point. So um, we're just letting you know about the financial situation that we have and how we're meeting and paying our bills. There are no expenses, I don't believe that we are doing that we can't do. I mean, we can't operate the building with anything less than what we have. So we're really being very budget conscious. Um, 
I guess that's all we can say about that is just to remind you um, gently that if you um, do miss a worship on Sunday, well, the rest of us are still all here and the lights are still on and the heat is still, still going, so we're running the building. Try to make up any of those um, uh, weeks that you might miss when you come back and uh, we'll be happy to have you back and we will have missed you. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, that's all I can think of. Yeah. But, you know, I have a terrible memory. <laughs> so. um, that's pretty much it, what we're involved in and what we're going to do. Do you want to say anything about... Um, open doors? Yeah, open doors. Yeah. And then maybe a couple of the um, uh, get-togethers you might be looking at if things work out that way. Uh, just a little bit of council business. Uh, Debbie is in charge of our what we're calling open doors, which is kind of an open house type thing. We're planning on uh, Saturday, May 20th. Sounds like it's far away, but trust me, it won't seem so far when we start planning it. Uh, it's really, I think, uh, did we say one to three? Is that what we're saying, Debbie? Okay. This is a uh, kid-oriented kind of, uh, we'll have a bouncy house, we'll have some type of refreshments and some games for the kiddos and just wanting people in the neighborhood to come by and see us and we'll have some handouts for the adults and things like that. Uh, it kind of started back when we were planning a 70th, an 70th anniversary party type thing, but COVID kind of got in the way, so that's still one of our concepts, but we also want to just want to be a good neighbor to the neighborhood, so that's coming up, and we'll need some volunteers to operate the various game booths and things of that nature. Uh, also, as far as plot, uh, a couple of things I've got planned, maybe are is maybe for us retired folks, is an afternoon uh, game, uh, a game afternoon where we might play some board games and some other games, and we might do another one uh, for a, a game night. So those are a couple of things. I also wanted to let people know uh, the local Escape Theater in Jeffersonville is presently showing uh, throwback movies, and the one for today through Wednesday is the Ten Commandments, and I mean the 1956 version starring Charlton Heston. So a few of us talked at Sunday school. Some of us that are retired are going to try to go at 1 p.m. on Tuesday. The show times are at 1 and 7, and just let me kind of warn you, this movie is three hours and 40 minutes long but it has some pretty, I've never seen it personally on a movie screen, so that's why I want to go. And I think that's about it. So if you want to join us for the movie, please, please do so. Um, I thought of something while you were talking and I forgot it now. What's up, Maya, you got an announcement? Okay, come on up. We need like a booster thing here for you, so you can talk into the mic. If anybody hasn't ordered cookies or just wanted extra, we have extra cookies that we are selling. So I don't know. I we might be might be selling them in the fellowship hall. Just letting you know. And we're selling cookies for Girl Scouts. And if they order cookies, what? Oh, if they're here. If you order cookies, they're here. Okay, and that's for Girl Scouts. Okay, thank you, Maya. She's getting better and better each time. There's a lot to remember, right, Maya? That's why I always write it all down. Okay. Um, Easter lilies, we will be doing Easter lilies this year. They are $15 each. There is a page in your which majigger um, that looks like this, and so fill it out if you want to do Easter lilies. Um, youths, um, the youth gathering is July 16 to 20, 2024, in, in, I forgot, what, New Orleans? New Orleans. Um, and also, we're doing confirmation camp, we have me and one, two, three, four now, right, Zach? Four for confirmation camp? I think we have four for confirmation camp, and that is July 11 through 16, is that right? 
June 11 through 16. Yeah, so anybody with the kiddos or the teen O's, teen O's, teens, yeah, who want to participate in that holler. Indiana Kentucky Synod Youth Mission Trips, Sunday, June 25th through Saturday, July 1st. Um, in Louisville, it will be at Christ. Uh, let me know if you're interested or let Patty know. And are there any other announcements? Going once, going twice. All right. So, I want to thank everyone online for joining us today. Uh, if you enjoyed today's service or you found it meaningful, we would love it if you could prayerfully consider giving so we can keep Faith's ministries going strong. You can go to flcjeff.org and click on the Give tab to give online without even creating an account. And you can do that even if you're here. Um, that's how Jules and I both give. Um, and remember that in this world that is becoming more and more reliant on technology to share online and to interact with our social medias is to bear witness. Um, so you can like us on Facebook at, ready Connor? Faith Lutheran Church ELCA. <laughs> so be sure to find us and click the follow button. And everyone online, if you enjoyed watching today's service, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. We're also on YouTube at Faith Lutheran Church Jeffersonville IN, so be sure to subscribe there too, but we are still not, we haven't fixed that problem yet. Can we work on that this week? Jules? <laughs> okay, because it's been like three weeks or two weeks that I've announced it. I think three weeks. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we'll work on figuring out whatever that is this week. And lastly, you can find us and follow us on Instagram at Faith Lutheran Jeff, all one word. And with that said, let us rise as we are able and we will receive the blessing. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks.